things going that's you know if you haven't subscribed I appreciate it if you do and all those guys that have love you all really appreciate it so anyhow let's get down to uh, video um, I'm up at the foundry right now uh, I'm going to show you it has been a while since I made that one motorcycle part we're going to make a couple of those up here I did want to make some permanent equipment for it but I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to get to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do them, you know, onesies. The guy only wants, I think, 10 of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do them, uh, try to bang those out in the next couple of days. Got a little bit of time off of work right now. Uh, some things going on there. Um, you know, maybe we'll be able to divulge in a little while. Uh, got a little bit of time off of work. So... I'm going to try to bang some stuff out here up in the foundry. I've got a lot of work in the garage, too. Um, I've been filming a lot, too. You know, one of the things is, like, like I said, you always want to keep your workspace clean. My workspace has been a, a, a it's been terrible. So, got to get that done, uh, that cleaned up and that. Now i got a little bit of time. We'll, we'll try to get going. A um, couple other things, too. Uh, I've been getting called out on some safety things and that, especially up here. Uh, I, I do take safety very, very, uh, I, I, it, it's a lot for me. So one of the things is, is uh, one of the guys said, you know, tennis shoes. You know, I had tennis shoes on the one time. Uh, not a good idea. It, it really isn't. And it's like, you know, he said, I always say, it's not an excuse. It's life happens. Um, I live 40 minutes away from the foundry. Uh, nine times out of ten, my life is like everybody else's life. It's all go, 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 go. So I try to get as much stuff ready to bring up here to the foundry with me the night before. And it just, you know, it doesn't I always forget stuff up here. Um, I have a bag where I put all my safety stuff in because I was leaving it here. And like I said, I don't want this to deter you guys, especially younger guys, and that I've gotten burnt down here twice, okay? And uh, once, I got, I got a steam burn, I'll, I'll tell you what, got a steam burn, uh, we kept the safety equipment here, uh, PPE, all the PPE, okay? Uh, put a pair of gloves on at one time, and they, they, had, they were moist, all right? There's a lot of moisture in the gloves. So we were pouring, and what happened is that moisture started turning to steam and I ended up getting a real nice burn on my knuckle here and you know I was pouring I had to keep on pouring so you know just, it was burning um, the first time I got burnt down here was I couldn't wait to get some spats to cover over my shoes all right so I finally made enough money where I could go out and buy some spats the very first time I used spats, we were pouring the excess metal into one of the molds there. There was some dirt in it. It popped. And where did that chunk of metal go? It went right down in between my pants and my spats. It got stuck in there. So I had a real nice burn on the side of my leg. That was a pretty good quarter size burn. It burned bad. So it, it's, I've been doing this, like I said, lots of years. All right. Um, a lot of this stuff is, a lot of safety stuff is, glasses, you got to wear them. To me, hearing protection is optional. At Ford, we had to have hearing protection in the foundry. We didn't have to have in the pattern shop. All right, one of the guys uh, is suggesting I wear silvers down here. A couple things with silvers are horrifically expensive. And for me to, you know, I think I made it up here eight times last year. So for me to pay, you know, four hundred fifty dollars for a silver coat, it's not worth four hundred fifty dollars. Okay, um, 
all the foundries I've worked in, I've worked at a couple dozen. All right, I've literally worked in four foundries, um, and I've been to dozens, you know, when I had my own business. Um, I, I never seen anybody wear silvers. Uh, I see we have silvers at the steel steel mill. Um, the guys that wear the silvers at the steel mill are the guys that are around the molten metal, obviously. Um, I was talking to my one boss about them one time. He basically said yeah, it is protection for splatter, but it's also mostly what the silvers are for is for heat. It, it deflects the heat off. I'm, I'm up to, you know, we do 2,000 degrees tops here with the brand, so if the heat's heat's bearable with what we got. Nine times out of ten, when you are melting metal and, and when you're pouring in that, if something pops and it hits you, 95% of the time, it instantly oxidizes and will roll off of you. All right, so it's it's going to be very rare that something's going to hit you, stick to you, burn through your clothing. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to happen, and it does. One of the things we have at work, I guess, safety stuff, uh, PPE is going to be scrutinized a little bit more. We have to wear long johns, long underwear. Those are for heat, okay? Um, it, it is some fire protection, and then our, we have long sleeve shirts and long pants. Those are really heavy, and when they get sent out to get cleaned, they get fire coated. There's a fire coating, I guess, in them or something in that with them. Most of the guys down there don't tuck their shirts in, especially around when you're around the molten metal. There's been, you know, talk that that's going to change. We're going to have to start tucking in. Ask any welder. I don't want my shirt tucked in because if a chunk of molten metal goes down there, it's just going to go down, 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 down. I want it going in there. You know, you can shake your shirt out, but it's going to come out. If you got it tucked in, it's getting so. So some of the stuff, like I said, it's, you should always have safety equipment, PPP, PPE, but there's certain uh, different, some of it's personal. Okay, when I worked at Air Aluminum, we had to wear long pants in the pattern shop, period. You know, that's just the way the boss was, and it's, that's the way he always worked. If you notice the picture, uh, go back to when I interviewed my dad, we had a picture of him as an apprentice. He had a white long sleeve dress shirt on and a tie. That's real safe, and he's on a lathe too, right? So it's just the way they dress. It's tradition. traditional back in the days you wore shorts. I never seen my boss outside in shorts either. Guys don't like shorts, so nobody else could wear them. I, I'll, I wear shorts as much as I can. As soon as it hits 60 here in Cleveland, I got shorts on. You know, I'll tell the snow flies in that. I, I don't like long. You'll barely ever see me in long sleeves. Um, good idea, bad idea? No, it's not good. Here I wear short sleeves when I'm molding. I get dirty. Then when I melt the metal, I put the jacket on. All right, so that helps me out. Okay, so there, there's just like I said, you, you got to use your head. You got to do what's comfortable for you. Um, like I said, tennis shoes is not a good idea. It, it, it truly isn't. One of the biggest things is, um, and like I said, this is, doesn't make everything better. Uh, one of my customers, he pours iron in tennis shoes. All right. Only thing he does, the biggest. The deal you have with the shoes, and that's why when you wear the spats, something goes. You don't want the stuff getting stuck in the laces. All right, that's that's what'll happen. Okay, so nine times out of ten, if it, if you didn't have laces on there and it hits your boot, it's going to oxidize and roll off. All right, you're not going to have an issue, but it, you don't want the stuff getting the laces. So what he does, he takes packing tape and puts it over his laces. When the iron hits that, it oxidizes, roll off. Right, so. Yeah, you can say, well, yeah, if like maybe a baseball, tennis ball size chunk of iron comes and lands on your foot, you're screwed anyhow, basically. And, you know, same thing, your arm, your chest, whatever. Wearing a PPE is not going to protect you from that either, all right? So you, it, it, a lot of it, I think, is it gets a little bit like, you know, hey, I'm just going to take the chance or whatever. But young guys, just get in the habit of just follow safety stuff. And it's, especially younger, you know, 
I, my dad first, uh, the amount of time my dad had on my on machinery, I was working at Ford, got a telephone call. The, uh, we didn't have cell phones back then, believe it or not. Uh, boss comes running around the, the, the corner. My uh, union rep came out. The union rep was a good friend of my dad's. You know, he goes, hey, you know, your wife's on the phone. Just happened to have a phone right by my bench. Got on there. Say, hey, what's going on? He says, hey, your dad cut some fingers off. So I'm like, what, what happened? It was, uh, cut him off on a router. So boss said, hey, just go see your dad. Went to the hospital. My sister was there. She's a nurse. And, that, and it's, uh, she looks at me, there's two nurses sitting there, and uh, she goes, well, you know, hey, look, dude's 70 years old. It took him until he was 70 to cut a couple fingers off. You know, it's not, it's not funny, but it's just, it, it and the two nurses are like, what, seriously? But, you know, the thing is, is it just, when you get older, you get comfortable doing certain things in certain ways. And that, and uh, like I said, here I wear shorts when I'm old. I'll go put a pair of long pants on. I usually bring my boots. Forgot them a few times. And that, and uh, it's just more comfortable for me to mold than that. And, and just like you know, crappy clothes. And it, it gets hot in here. It's 14 by 28 foot room. Basically, we got the exhaust fans. You know, I'd rather be hot here in these, you know, shorts, t-shirts get a little dirty, sweaty than, you know, have the fans going because it's this noise and I'd rather not have the noise and that's so all. Just do the safety stuff as much as you can and when, when you're doing this for 50 years and, you know, whatever, you know, so that's it. Um, we'll get going on this job. I'll try to get as much stuff uh Done. I'm gonna try to. Uh, it's fairly early in the morning, so I'm kind of hoping I can get a good day in. I haven't been feeling too good lately. Um, I think I get a head cold going. I'm kind of groggy and lethargic a little bit, so we'll see how the day goes here. So I'm planning on getting a couple of those uh, motorcycle covers done, and then from there, I would like to get another batch of those uh, brass white pipes done. So. Uh, brought the other cam with me. I'm going to try to see if we can uh, get some different angles on some things and that. So bear with me. I'll uh, get some stuff set up and get going. All right. Okay, guys, we're going to get going. Uh, one of the things I said I was going to do first, I wanted to do aluminum first. Get the, uh, what I'm doing with the aluminum, it's uh, a little bit more forgiving than those Y pipes. So. I wanted to pour those warm sand up. I mean, it, it hasn't been, temperature hasn't been too bad. We're still getting out of the 30s at night here too. So sand's probably not that warm, but um, like I said, I forget stuff. And I forgot to bring the pattern here, period. So what I'm gonna try to do is uh, go ahead and do the white pipes. We'll see how it goes. See how these things are molding up here. Um, I do have some more aluminum, I, I've got, trying to make those flasks so I could pour a couple of those. Um, but I, I really gotta get going on these Y pipes. So I'm gonna attempt to make those things. And I have another job, if you remember way back uh, a few months ago, Joe and I actually made a uh, little statuette of his um, local uh, union, uh, electrician's union. So we'll try to make one of those too. All right, uh, we'll get going. You've seen me make the Y pipes before, but you know, it's, uh, I'll show you again. Um, one of the things is I was donning my PPE here. Like I said, I'm molding right now. I got shorts, t-shirts on, uh, gloves. Told you my dad cut a couple fingers off, okay? You gotta watch, like I said, a lot, not a lot of times. Some of the times your PPE bites you, all right? You gotta watch as a tradesperson where you wear gloves, okay? Um, you gotta be very careful. Uh, if you're doing woodworking like my father and I do, uh, or he did, um, you don't, in, in metalworking also, do not wear gloves while you're working with the wood. In that, I'll wear them, the only time I wear gloves is if I'm using plywood, because plywood you get a lot of splinters off of. 
and a table saw, but if I'm doing something real close on the table saw, I don't because what happens is those blades and bits and all that stuff, they'll grab these gloves and they will pull your fingers in. That's exactly what happened to my dad. He was uh, wearing a pair of gloves and he was working on a router and boom, you know, I just lost the tips of these three fingers right here. Two fingers and a pinky. All right, so you'll watch that. Then we've had, uh, so four, there's a guy who had these kind of gloves on, rubberized, he grabbed something, he was turning on the lathe, it caught, his pinky was sticking out the side over here. So you, you gotta watch, use your head when you do things. A lot of this stuff is common sense and you just be careful constantly, 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 all right? I'm molding, um, I don't like to get my hands as dirty anymore as I did, that's why I'm wearing gloves here, so. Um, we'll get on to molten. All right, I'll show you how to do this again. This one's all set. Basically, all I'm doing is filling full of sand and uh, making molds, and then we'll pour some. I'll show you make a couple molds, and then we'll go from there. All right. Okay, guys, we're on a molding machine here. Um, this particular one, I don't have a top board to use the squeezer. We will use the jolt. And uh, like I said, you always start drag half. All right, mold the drag half first. All right, parting compounds, like I said, uh, one of the things I keep on saying I'm gonna do, and I keep on forgetting, is uh, I'll get on it. Um, I gotta get some links to where I get a lot of my stuff, okay? So this um, particular parting compound that I have, I actually get it from, um, Oh, I'll think of it in a minute. It just popped out of my head. I'll tell you, it's Foundry Supply Company, but this actually has got a, it's, it, it was a little more expensive. It's actually got some graphite in it too, and I'm finding this stuff is way better. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, top and seam, okay? Use your riddle. Put some top and seam in there. Then I'm gonna go ahead Put a couple shovelfuls of sand in here. Like I said, I got this machine, so it's a little nicer for me. It hasn't been used in a little bit, so let's see if we get this one going. Good. Get your bottom board, put your bottom board on here. Roll her over. All right, now we got the cope. And with the cope, uh, there's a couple risers that I put in there. Um, the way I gotta do these ones, they're uh, actually loose. So we'll put those on there and then uh, instead of pressing the sprue in too, oops, these are the wrong ones here. Um, instead of pressing the sprue, I just put it in there. It just makes it a little easier for me. All right, that's just the way I do it. You could, you could press the sprue in if you want. It's easier, but not easier. It does get in the way. So I'll get my topping sand. So there's a couple spots around these risers that I'm not gonna be able to get in with the impactor. All right, so I'm gonna uh, 
have to do them by hand, but I'm going to make sure that these stay in here good. So tuck it in with my fingers a little bit, okay? Take my sprue. I know that's around here somewhere. I can feel the screw down there. I'm going to do the same thing with the sprue too, okay? Kind of pack it in by hand a little bit. And then I'm going to do Take something a little thinner. Make sure we pack around that sprue real good. Make sure we get around these risers real good. And then do her again. things I see a lot of guys backyard guys do in that I get it I always tell you do things as best as you can right and, and we do but part of the things uh, you got to realize some things just aren't a big deal okay so one of the things that isn't a big deal like when I see guys mold things, you know, they got to have this mold perfect and it, uh, you know, this out, outer up part, upper part perfect. Okay, you don't. It'll look nice. There are certain things that I want big holes where, you know, if you have some metal, you know, it might pool in there that you don't want. You don't want loose stuff falling in there but for the most part you know it doesn't have to be perfect okay take your spoon i like to make a little bowl a little pouring bowl okay you know there's there's another thing some guys put like an offset bowl down there everybody does are getting different um when i worked at aero aluminum we did that sometimes there are certain jobs mo mostly like real big jobs they put like an offset bowl where you'd pour and then let the metal go down the sprue. But little match plate jobs like this, never, never seen it. Never seen it. So, um, like I say, whatever works for you. Like I said, the one guy that I do a lot of work for, you know, the way he does his gating, it just, a lot of it to me is unnecessary the way he does certain things in that and uh he comes up with some funky 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 ways to gate but hey okay, your uh your goal is to get a good casting he gets good casting so you know where it's at just want that the, the you know product at the end to be good right um let me plug my vibrator in her two since i've been doing this you watch my older videos i used to ram by hand god send hundred dollars best hundred dollars i've ever spent even if i i gotta replace that once a year hundred bucks it's worth it you know um foundries do go through these my one buddy, he pays uh, 650 bucks for his. He's got them laying all over the shop and different disrepairs, you know. So uh, the other thing, I bought a vibrator. It's a little bit expensive. Freeman Manufacturing. Well worth it. Uh -huh. sand's cold doesn't pack as well so sand packed up pretty good they said it's still a little chilly 
you know, hopefully when we pour it'll be good, but uh, we'll see how the day goes. I kind of, uh, I got down here early, but I haven't seen uh, the owner of this building for a little bit, so we were catching up a little. So I got, got behind here, so. So yeah, might as well leave these things on, I guess. Okay, you've seen me do those dozens of times before. I'll uh, turn off, I'm gonna make a couple more molds of these things. Now what I'll do is uh, when I get ready to do that um, little statuette, we'll turn that on. That's all hand stuff, hand gating and that. But you know, that's not a big, you know, gonna be a big gating job either or nothing. So I'm gonna turn you guys off for a little bit. And when we get back to that one, we'll turn you back on. Hang tight. Okay guys, got a few made few molds made. I usually make five on those. I just made four. I'm gonna save a flask. Um, if you guys saw the uh, video where Joe and I made this, Joe did all the lettering on this. This is pretty cool. They actually did a really good job on this. Um, I'm gonna try to make sample one of these real quick. Um, I thought I was gonna be able to make five molds uh, of the uh, Y pipes, but I gotta put this in the bigger flask that you know I use for the white pipe. So I'm just gonna do one of these. Bummer part of it is is I'll probably need a little bit of a riser in this because this basically this whole bottom section here is real thick. Okay, so and that's actually gonna act like a riser for the rest of this. So I'm gonna have to have a pretty good riser, you know, feeding this here. All right, but. One thing is I use the taller flask for the other thing, which I could have done the other way around, but it is what it is. We'll just, this is a sample. We'll, we'll try to figure out what's going on. Just want to see what it, it's going to look like when it's in, uh, in brass or bronze or whatever. So I'm going to mold this up for you guys and uh, um, we'll get the furnace going, pour some stuff off. Um, again, I've had some people comment on the way I do some of the furnace stuff. I'm going to uh, take the camera over there once I get going on that and I'll show you what I do, how I do it. Um, one of the things, you know, I, I really do love comments on here, good and bad. I don't know everything. I'm a pattern maker. I'm not really a foundry member. I just worked in foundries. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, I, I do, you know, there's a couple foundry guys that watch and uh, I really like their input and that. But, um, there, there's a couple suggestions that I've had, and it's um, I kind of urge people to watch all the videos because they're kind of reiterating things that I've already said or I've already done that I can't do in every video. So it, it's a thing where, like I said, I love all the comments and everything, but it, it just kind of, you know, if there's a newer guy watching and, and uh, he hasn't seen any of the other videos, he, sees a lot of negative comments you know I might not want to stick around or something so you know I, I urge you really to, to go over I, I try to cover much much of the stuff as I can I, I really think I do but once we get going with the furnace I'm gonna mold this up show you guys how I mold this up and then once we get going from there I'll uh, get you over by the furnace we'll go over all the furnace stuff all right so hang tight guys we'll get this going here okay all right so basically I'm gonna get started with this thing too. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm doing this upside down. I'm doing the I'm using the cope flat cope side of the flask is the drag this time because there's no pins on it. I don't have a board where it would fit in between the pins. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and uh, use the cope as a drag. It's not bad. It's just one off. All right. So I'm gonna put this right in the middle. Uh, another thing, like I said, I always forget stuff. And I'm gonna have to put this thing in on the other in the cold path, and I don't have it pinned. I did bring some uh, double-sided tape. The one time I came down here with this, I took it back home and I didn't bring it back here. So we're gonna see how this works out. All right. So same thing. I just got this sitting on a board. I'm gonna put my parting compound in, and then I'm gonna ram this up. Okay. Once we make some permanent equipment for this, I'd, I'd like to make these out of copper because, you know, electricians, right? So there was a hole in this, so I'm going to make sure that I got the, uh, 
make sure I got some sand in there. Actually, I did have some more of this in the spacing bucket, but that's all right. All right, so drag half, you, you jolt this, this side. Okay. Bit on that one. Okay, like I said before, if you haven't ever seen any of my videos, what you gotta do is uh, we're gonna do some hand gating here, okay? So basically what I'm gonna have to do is um, to make sure I get it from coke to drag, drag to coal, I'm gonna have to uh, figure out where we're going. So uh, we got another camera shot, hopefully it's working. I got two inlets here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple in gates here. Okay, we're, we're this way a little bit. So I'm gonna put my sprue down here. I'm gonna put a sprue down here. And I'm gonna put a runner down here. Okay, now this imprint here is gonna come out in the cold path and then I'll be able to dig all that out and then have my cope and drag uh, gating on there okay because if I if I just do the if I do the drag half first and I dig that out when I do the cope that's gonna make a mail on there okay you don't want that you have to dig all that stuff out right so it's better to do this individual okay so here again you're gonna need uh party compounds gotta go on here okay like I said dummy me I forgot my I don't know how this is going to work, but, uh, you know, I forgot to uh, bring the double-sided tape here. So let's see what we can do here. Oops. Got to be real careful with this one. Um, this one, since I got this loose piece in here, I'm probably going to go ahead and, and uh, do this by ramming this one up by hand. And it's not just because I smashed my hand. Uh, like I said, watch what you're doing all the time. I, it, it's lumping up there. I don't want to look at it again. So, just got to watch what you're doing. because it's hopefully that one piece is good enough in there it's not going to move anywhere so. and then this is all stuff too like you know it being a wood pattern maker that's something you can turn up on the lathe you get the lathe you have to buy all this stuff you know make your own uh, i've seen a lot of guys cast them um pretty cool but to me i'm looking at those and it's like you're doing that all day with those heavy metal ones I, you know, I don't know, to each his own, I guess, but these things look a little heavy to me, so. All 
right, so both halves are separate from each other, so uh, I'm anticipating everything sticking in. So I'm just gonna go ahead, eh, I could use a vibrator a little bit, but. Vibrator's not really doing anything. So, yep. So that's what happened, everything's stuck in her. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave the pattern in her because it's easier to cut the gating with that in there, okay? Um, if you cut the gating, when you take, after you take the pattern out, what it tends to do is you know, you're gonna cave the, your hole in, okay? So piece of sheet metal, actually this piece of gutter. This is good spoon out, I use, use this for runners a lot. And you scoop it and it holds the sand so that you can, you know, take the sand out actually. So it's kind of easier that way. So I'm scooping it, the sand's actually coming out with this. Okay, so this is gonna be another thing too. All right, we're gonna do this in brass, so we're gonna not need to have a huge uh, runner in end gates, okay? Usually they tend to be on the smaller side, okay? Um, I'm gonna make a bowl before my sprue comes down. And then uh, that way the metal has somewhere to kind of like settle. Um, like I said, that one guy, he, he never does this. And when I went to that gating school, that was one of the biggest things. They said, you know, you gotta have a bowl at the bottom and pretty much anybody and everybody I do work for, they always put a bowl at the bottom of the sprue, okay? Now I'm just gonna go ahead and take my uh, my spoon here, take some end gates, and I'm gonna put two on this. I probably probably don't even really need to put. Uh, I'm gonna put it in the upper part too, in the cove. Um, probably don't need to do two. I could probably just have one wider end gate and uh, have one wider end gate and just have one. Uh, in gate like on top of riser if this goes good we'll probably put two of these on a board and that's what we'll do like uh, another statuette that I do I got the two patterns on the outside pour right in the middle one big riser feeds both ends and, and, and the, the ends are just like this so that's um, probably the way we're gonna do this when we get some permanent equipment on it you know so I'm doing this and then actually too, if you, now I got some place I can actually hold on to, to uh, dig out the pattern also, okay? So in doing this this way, um, you've got to be real careful because you don't want to ruin your mold either. And see, I'm blowing some of the sand away. It's going to leave a little bit more of a fin, so um, yeah, we'll figure it out. Try another trick here. Let's see if we can get it out this way. I'm going to make a couple little handles here. This kind of stuff doesn't work all the time. Actually, let's do this. Let's see if we can cheat. I don't know, like I said, I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah, it's not sticking too well. Afraid to use a screwdriver. I, can, I could probably put screws in this plastic end if it doesn't come out. Yeah, this tape, tape's not sticking. I'm going to have to get the screw gun out, put some screws in here. I don't want to screw into here because there's nothing there. So. We'll try to screw into this plastic and then see if we can get it out with that. Hang tight, guys. All right, I got a couple holes in here. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if this will work. Probably got to be careful. This plastic will bust too, so you got to be careful with all this stuff. Ooh. Okay, got that half out. Broke part of the mold, but 
sample. We'll be all right. Try to be a little more careful with this one here. too bad. I see a couple letters are a little bad, but Okay, I lost a letter or two on this one, but like I said too, uh, you always have that mold wear too, so uh, after we do one or two, and then I, I lost that middle part in here. He, these always mess up in, in this particular thing. Come up with a better design for that or something. But, but yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pour it. We can clean it up a little bit. Like I said, this is just a sample, so it's not that huge a deal. All right, so I'm gonna close this up. I'm gonna get the molds all ready to go. Um, I'm gonna get you over by the furnace in a couple minutes. We'll go over some of the stuff with the furnace, all right? Hang tight. Okay guys, as promised, we're over by the furnace. I'm gonna show you some of the things that I do and uh, some of the things, like I said, guys have been, you know, hitting me up for stuff in the place and I love the comments. Please keep them coming. I've had a lot of good comments and I didn't know things and that, but things is, like I said, just watch my other videos too because I, I can't go over everything, every single video and guys are, you know, saying things that, you know, it, it's been covered in other videos, okay? So one of the things I ran into when I did that job for uh, Keith Rucker, um, that was actually the largest or the heaviest casting I've ever done down here. Most of my stuff is smaller, thinner. All right, so what happened with that thing is I've told you, I've told you numerous times, you guys got to clamp the two flats halves together, put weight on them or whatever. I clamp the ears of the flats. I use, my clamps I use, I clamp them. What happened in this particular situation, we had those clamped However, there was so much metal in it, it just pushed the sand up because there wasn't enough sand on top. All right, and that's where we had that. The reason I don't put weights on my flasks and on my sand in that I can't afford the weights and I can't store them down here. I've got no room to store them. That's why I just use these clamps. In the future, now I know, you know, that that's getting could be a problem down down in the future I'll, I'll work on that okay another thing a gentleman keeps on telling me which i always do very important thing when i put the crucible in um, my furnace all right i've got it sitting on a couple of uh, pieces of fire brick all right so last you know year or so i've been having issues with those pieces sticking to the crucible. A couple things. Here's my cardboard. I put cardboard underneath there all the time. I always do that. What it's supposed to do is put a piece of carbon in between and then, you know, it's not supposed to have those bricks um, stick to the crucible, okay? Um, I bought two crucibles off this guy they were kind of rejects. I got them for half price, which is my my budget. Okay, um, they were over glossed as they put some kind of a coating on them. They're over, and that's what's happening is that stuff just melts and then it sticks to the block. The other thing he suggested too is that you really should your build up block or whatever you want to call it down there um, actually should be the same material as what. The crucible is that way it won't stick also those are two hundred dollars I'm not spending two hundred dollars on something that's you know gonna last a little bit and, and you know the crucibles you have no no uh, uh, you gotta buy the crucibles all right so the other thing too is you know I'll take a hammer and smack those off okay and you know one guy said hey you know you're gonna bust your your crucible I I've never seen a crucible break. I've seen them do. I mean, I've seen guys drop them off of tow motors. I've had several where I've had, um, I've had a couple times where the furnace has gone out. Uh, we had the, the uh, fire, uh, 
fire suppression system in here. Uh, my fans cut out the one time it got so hot in here, the sprinkler system went off, so I had to shut everything down. Then what happened was, you know, it uh, the metal solidified in there, so I didn't want to take the chance of putting it in the furnace in, in that breaking, you know. So I just, it was an older crucible, it was getting to that point, so. I beat the crap out of that thing. It, it, it took me forever to beat that thing. So the, the crucibles are, are pretty, if you take care of them, um, you know, the guy I get mine off, and he said you're good to get 24 melts out of them. The, the two that I'm using for aluminum and brass and bronze, I've been using them for, I probably got 30 melts each on these things already, and they're, they're still looking real good. So yeah, you got to take care of things and that. So, if you see me beating on, on these things, it's, it's not gonna hurt the crucible. All I'm doing is trying to get the, the build-up bricks off the bottom. Okay, another thing too, I've heard a lot of guys, a lot of backyard guys, a lot of backyard guys that actually are making castings and that, you know, they're all saying, don't, you know, you don't need to use any kind of flux or anything. If, if you wanna get good casting, you gotta have flux. It, it just, uh, you know, when I first started out, I, you know, didn't know much about things and uh, then I wasn't using it. I'd get some porosity in some of the castings and that, but it got to the point where uh, I had a foundry guy come down here and look at some stuff and, you know, he saw what all, all my, uh, you know, when we uh, get the uh, crust off the top there, it, it's uh, the dross, when I get that off, I had uh, one that I had a bunch of brass uh, dross in there, and he's like, oh my God, look at all the, the brass in there. Dude, you gotta start, you know, using flux. Since I've been using the flux, I have, like, I, I produce half the, the dross. Plus, the other thing is, I'm, I'm not getting any kind of impurities in the casting. No impurities, no uh, gas bubbles, but here, that's not for the gas so much as, you know, I use borax for the copper based stuff, and then we'll use uh, chlorine for the aluminum. Another thing too, and I saw this on a video the other day I was watching, the guy had some metal up on, he was just making ingots, but he's like, oh yeah, you gotta preheat your metal before you put it, you're not preheating, that's just to get the moisture off, okay? You don't have to get that metal off the temperature. Actually, I've seen guys, they'll put pieces of metal over the top and let it start dripping. You're just creating more, um, What's going to happen is you're you're, uh, you're oxidizing that metal, you know, exposing it to the air. So the best thing is to do is to get that metal underneath that molten metal. But in order to do that, that metal's got to be totally free of any kind of moisture. All right. So you make sure there's no moisture on it, and uh, you want to get that metal underneath there too. Okay. Um, there are times when you will see me throw some things in right out of a scrap bucket right into the crucible and the reason I'm doing that is because there's no molten metal in there just yet okay so or there might be a little bit on the bottom you know and there's some scrap metal that's going to sit up on top of the scrap metal just as long as that you know stuff doesn't go under molten metal all right so I'm going to charge this thing up and I'm going to fire it up and then we'll get to pouring all right hang tight guys
some missing words, you know, or letters, I should say. This middle part filled in, but I forgot to put uh, risers on there. It looks like it filled pretty good in that, too. So, all oh, this whole side is shrunk here. But, I mean, for first, first try, not bad. Okay, here's that one. We got four good ones of these, so that, that's pretty good for today. Okay, everybody, we uh, think we had a pretty good day up here. It's not, uh, I wanted to get two pours in, aluminum and brass, but like I said, I haven't been up here for a little bit, so I had some things I had to take care of, and then, like I said, I haven't seen uh, the guy that owns this building for a little bit, so I was rapping with him for a little bit. So, uh, anyhow, um, I'm going to come up here during the week again. Um, I'll try to get those aluminum. I'll make sure I bring the pattern this time. That was kind of embarrassing, but I remember my boots this time. So, uh, you know, we did all that stuff. Um, like I said, comments, keep them coming, please. It's not spilled, or uh, what do they call it? Spilled grapes, whatever. Uh, I'm, I, you know, I really enjoy the comments. I really do. I'll try to, you know, I can't type them out as much. I'll try to address them as much on camera as I can. Uh, it just... Please just watch. I mean, you know, watch my other tapes because they're videos because it's, it, it does get frustrating a little bit, especially like the safety things. It, it does kind of bother me a little bit when uh, I, I uh, doing things that, you know, people say is unsafe and it's like I have a, I already addressed that situation, you know, things like that. So, um, it, 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 it's important for new guys. It, it really is. So, uh, you know, keep everything coming. Appreciate it. Appreciate everybody watching. Like I said, we went over a thousand a few weeks ago. Uh, appreciate that hugely, guys. And like I said, let's just keep this going. I want to keep it going. I'll try to get some more stuff out, you know, sooner. So that I will uh, tape the uh, motorcycle cover. I'll do that. Um, a couple other things I have. I have an aluminum match plate that I have to do some changes to. So I'll get that done. I'll show you that. That's something we haven't covered yet. And if it's some things you have to do every once in a while, um, it's, uh, it's more for high production shops and that. Um, so there's that. I actually reached out. I'm not sure if I mentioned this on another video or not, but I reached out to another friend of mine that actually owns a pattern shop. Uh, we went through uh, trade school together. And that's how I knew him. He actually was my buddy Blaine's partner for a short time. Uh, they were partnered up in that. So I called him up. He, uh, you know, said we can come out to his shop. So you guys will get a, you know, view of a real pattern shop. And you know, Ken's a really good guy too. So we'll do that. And then I got to get out to the one foundry, the one big steel foundry. We'll get out of there. I have another, like what we're working on ways to make the videos better than that so I got something going for that one and the equipment's not quite ready yet so I want to try to make sure I have that equipment done before you know I head on down there and uh, film that particular process down there so um, there's that uh, like I said too I, I got t-shirts and hoodies and things like that I just got to figure a way to distribute them, get pay in and, and that. So, you know, down the road we'll do that. I got some stickers too, you know, things like that too. So we'll get on that stuff. But I really appreciate you guys sticking with me, especially for uh, how long it's been taking, you know, for uh, new videos to come out. And you know, hopefully we'll get back on uh, getting some out at least once, once a week I'd like to, at the very least. And... Um, you know, we'll see how it goes. Things are starting to calm down in my life a little bit right now, so um, knock on wood. So we'll do that. Like I said, got some uh, other jobs coming up. Um, I got one with a core. Show you how to make the cores and that, and then we'll, we'll get going on some of those stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna cut you guys loose. Been yapping the whole time. Didn't show you guys much. Just wanted to address those uh, couple of guys that you know had some uh, comments and that. The sour, sour grapes, not spoiled grapes. Um, yeah, it's not sour grapes. It's just I really, I really, you know, appreciate the input. But um, like I said, it's just we'll, you know, we'll, we'll work through things. So uh, you know, appreciate everybody watching. If you guys haven't subscribed, I appreciate you. Subscribe for me. Tell your buddies about me. I want to try to get some more subscribers, keep this stuff going. So with that, everybody have a safe one out there. 
and being a talk, you know.